Hello, good evening. Now the locomotives you're about to see tonight are all by Hornby and it's uh, two earlier versions of the uh, county class which is the uh, the 460 by Hawksworth uh, as, as opposed to the uh, earlier 440s from uh, Churchworth. These are by Hawksworth. And the models you're going to see <coughs> bear, bear with me, I've got a bit of a cough tonight. We're seeing our 2558 County Class, County of Brecknock. And that's from 2006, okay? Sorry about the wobbly camera work. Um, our 2211 BR460-1020 County of Monmouth. That's from 2001. And then the last one is a Hornby Railroad version. Which is our 2937 County of Cornwall, okay? So, I hope you enjoy watching this um, this video. And it's really comparing the, the three models and the advantages between the older version and the Hornby Railroad version, okay? So, get your popcorn ready and take a seat and away we go. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening and welcome to my humble modern railway, Bedstead Junction. Now tonight we're looking at uh, two Hawksworth County class locomotives. Uh, they were a part of a class of 30 locomotives, uh, which uh, were designed for the Great Western Railway before nationalisation. So they were designed during World War II, as far as, I could, as, far as I'm aware. And I'll just give this a quick brush off there to keep it nice and tidy. Right, well, okay, so... What are the differences between these and a, tr a traditional Great Western locomotive? Well, the first thing you might notice, um, some of you sort of aficionados of the Great Western Railway, is that this one has got, get straight in there and zoom in, straight nameplates and straight splashers. All the Hawksworth counties had straight splashers instead of uh, the arch ones, okay, instead of the rounded ones. Now we'll go over some of the, the details about this model while it's uh, pulled in. Um, it's uh, it's in BR Early Quest, and it's in line black. And in my opinion, <clears throat> it's a very very nice model. Uh, what don't you get? Uh, I don't think you get a separately spit, uh, fitted smoke box dart. And if I can remember rightly, I don't think we get a fully painted cab, but we're looking at a locomotive now from the early 2000s, uh, before that became a common feature. Now the two, um, the main differences as well you can see between these uh, locomotives as well, is that the uh, other locomotive was in late BR Quest there, that's County of Monmouth. County of Brecknock, or Brecon, has got a single chimney, County of Monmouth has a, has a double chimney. Which I would guess would have been a later modification. Uh, but then you've got your copper chimney, brass safety valve and whistles. Fully glazed cab. And we'll just get back down onto County of Brecknock so we can get closer in. And we'll just show you here. Sorry about the tripod being in the back there. And you've got a nice gold, a nice sort of metallic surround on the on the on the window there okay really nice models now this th these two models are an older design and they contain what they call the type 8 ring foot motor right so we'll have a look and see what that means now county of uh, brecknock or brecon looking at in the front in br black it was manufactured, it was R2558, and it was manufactured in August 2006. Okay, let me get focus on that. R2558, August 2006. And the Type H ring foot motor has an advantage. You can change the brushes and springs, you can clean this one up. Change the brushes and springs, give the motor a good service, and you're away. You're up and running, okay? 
Um, it gives you instructions there where you can uh, service the gears. The gear in there, I mean, that's, um, a, you can work on that once you re remove the, the cover from the motor. Okay, can be a bit of a fiddly job because there's a screw, screw with a nut on it going through there. But it, it's not too bad once you get working on it. And um, you can really get, get to everything that needs servicing on these locomotives. Quite easy to remove the body as well. Nice locomotive. And both, um, both locomotives you see in front of you there have got this uh, similar construction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this one a little run, County of Brecknock, before we move on to County of uh, Monmouth. Now we're just going to put the, uh, the locomotive into reverse. I'm just going to run it right to the station. You can see her go, watch her go there in a moment. Let's zoom out just a little, shall we? So we can see the whole locomotive there. In fact, you can see the pair of them together now. And off we go. Over those points without any hesitation. Absolutely lovely. Both these locomotives, in my opinion, are really nice runners. Now, we will be comparing this to the later Hornby Railroad model, okay, a much later model, which is a different construction to, to these um, two here. All right, so we'll talk about those quite shortly, uh, those quite shortly, the railroad models. And what are the advantages and the disadvantages between the two, okay? Because there are advantages and disadvantages, as everything in life. And we, as long as you're aware of those different things, it will enable you to make a choice if you're wondering which one of the two to buy. Now, obviously, you're going to be buying a, a model that's much older, okay? I mean, you're looking at a model here that's about 17 years old, isn't it? I would say. Well, this model here that you see in front of you, I have to do a bit of maths then, it's 17 years old, okay? Bear in mind, it's 17 years old. I bought this from eBay. And how much trouble have I had with it? None. Okay, probably some done it well. You have no trouble at all with this. It's been a pleasure to own this model. It's not been run for some time, so... It's literally show the box. I might give this one a bit of a service actually when I get a chance. Really, really nice model this. County of Brecon. Or as it says on the County of Brecknock. Now, forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. Uh, it's a Welsh county, of course. Um, if you ever go to Brecon, the town of Brecon, uh, that's where you'll find the museum for the uh, Welsh Borderers Regiment. Which I believe my grandfather was in. And he fought in World War One with the borderers. Okay, so and you've got a good museum there. Well, well worth a visit. Back into a nice little town. We should fly through the station there. And these were used all over the Great Western Railway system. So they amounted the 30 engines. Very much like the, the uh, manors. There, there were 30 of those built. And the kings. And like a lot of things, it was probably the, probably the Second World War that um, affected a lot of things, plus the decision to modernise and go diesel. The decision was made quite some time before dieselization was brought into force, but steam locomotives continued to be well manufactured. As far as the British Rail was concerned, that was British Rail standard classes. But this is a genuine GWR design. This one's going on right here. What a lovely locomotive. I'm saying BR Line Black. And I've got all three um, liveries actually covered here, as far as I know. So I've got the, um, the early crest black. I've got the late crest in uh, green. I've also got the uh, 
the original Great Western uh, livery as well. All three models which you see on the railway have all got one thing in common. So that's the old, uh, the older models which were made in the 2000s and the newer railroad models. They're all basically the same, uh, largely the same construction, except that the um, the railroad models have got a different chassis and a different motor, okay? But the one thing you need to watch out on all three of these is the bolt gear. And we'll have a look at that quite shortly as well for you. I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean. And it is easily fixed. I've never had any problems with this, okay? I'm not, it's not, it doesn't even need any dismantling to, uh, to put right. Now you need to be very very careful how you put these models up and how they come out of the box. And that counts for the um, you have these um, earlier models and the railroad model. Because the slide bars, which the cross heads move in, I'll show you what that is, for those who are not very technical. And I don't, you know, we're not all technical are we? And I only learned all this when uh, over, over a number of years. Uh, then the slide bars are made of plastic. So if you pick the locomotive up and you squeeze it, you hold it too near the front and you squeeze it, there's a chance that you, put, you can push the cross head out of the slide bar and we try to run it the locomotive won't run at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, we're going to have a closer look at our country of Brecon or Brecknock so we can, have, we can have to show you some of these design features, okay? Then we'll run the other two models and then we can actually um, quite, quite um, nicely wrap things up. Right, so count your break now. Let's bring your uh, down towards me now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncouple her. No, I'll change my mind actually. I've got the right to change my mind, haven't I? Here we go. I'll change my mind. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're going to bring her in because I can show you all the, all the design features that I want to show you. Let's bring her into the station. We're 11 minutes into this video, so we need to uh, be careful about the, about the time. And in fact, time is running on a little bit tonight. It's a Sunday night. Uh, but I think we're getting just past 10 o'clock on a Sunday evening. I don't mind because it's a nice uh, running session and uh, I tend to like like to run, have a late night running session sometimes. So away we go. Right, so count your break knock, here she goes, over the points. Do a quick start there, but well, that was me on the controller. But as you can see, very, very nice control on these locomotives. Now because she's right on the very, very end here, I'm going to give her the, the hand of the giants. Just move her forward just a little bit, just so that they, the, the rear end of the coaches clear each other as they, as they go round. Right, the cross heads. Let's see if we get a good view of that. If not, we'll, we'll get um, we'll we'll get the uh, the lazy Susan out. We'll have a look. Now we're difficult to see because it's all in black. Ah, there we go. Got a nice view of it now. Now, you've got your cylinder block here, okay? And your slide bars are here, they're made of plastic, okay? And you've got your cross head there, and that moves backwards and forwards on from the connecting rod, okay? Now, what, you, what would happen is, if you accidentally pick the model up and grip it like that, those, um, there's a danger that those cross set there will come out of the slide bar. And in fact, it did on one of these models when I took out the box, okay? They're quite easy to pop back in. They're quite pliable. And they do go back in and they do stay in. And then the locomotives do run quite well. 
But that is something which uh, is carried on even with the railroad model. Just something to be aware of. Now what we're going to do, we're going to have a quick change of uh, points. And we're going to run the County of Monmouth. And you're going to see the differences between the two. So you've got, um, probably the, the main differences you've got, obviously, is the livery. Move into there. I'll put it there. Line black, line green. Single chimney, double chimney. That's the two um, the two main main differences. The other main differences really, okay. The tenders are all the same design, and in fact the tender design, the way the tender is connected to the locomotive, was carried on onto the railroad version. Right, let's give County of Monmouth a nice little run around the track. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, because uh it's nice to get these models out and talk about them. They've, all three of these were eBay purchases. And this is now the lovely County of Monmouth in BR Lime Green. Lates Crest. There we go. Started by the station there. And we'll give it a run. This model was produced a little bit earlier than our County of, Bre County of Bracknock. Okay, a very, very nice run of this one. Again, too much of a tool. Watch her fly through the station over there. And we'll have a little talk about her. Now, these locomotives have both got features which was not carried on into the railroad version. Okay, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's just put our uh, Captain Bretnock instructions back in the box. That's one tip actually, keep everything with the boxes. It's easy to get everything mixed up and then once you've done that, you're thinking, well what belongs with what? Okay, so our county of um Monmouth. Our 2211 produced in March 2001. So now this model is coming up to 22 years old. Okay, I'm still running perfectly well. I keep it given many, many years of good service on my railway. And again, we'll reiterate a few points. We've got this model out. So there, on the diagram there, you can see, there's your cinder block, there's your slide bars, and your cross head, okay, and that's made of plastic, you've got to watch your cross head don't pop out the slide bars, okay, because they're meant to be always going backwards and forwards in the slide bar like that, okay. Uh, once again, we got a good old friend, the Type H Wingford motor. Brushing springs. Any problems, give it a good clean. Maybe change your brushing springs and you're away for another 20 years, whatever. Anyway, depending on usage. Very, very nice locomotive, this. Now, what these have got, these are two locomotives, they've got a full plate between the tender 
and the actual um, locomotive itself. You see what I mean by the foreplate? And the foreplate is actually hinged. So you need to be careful about that when you actually uh, attach the uh, locomotive and the tender together so you don't get a clash and uh, damage the damage the full plate. Now the full plate on these as well are hinged, whereas even on the even the, some of the posher models of more of modern Hornby now, they're fixed in one position. Which is a bit of a step backwards in my opinion, because I think they're in some or some of them in quite an unnatural position on the more modern offerings nowadays. Let's bring it around and have a closer look at it then, shall we? Again, there's a few things I want to show you. Let's get the uncoupler and we'll have, we will have a proper look at this one. Now we're going to use the hand of the joints maybe to bring this closer to the camera. Wait just a moment. There we go, we've got the monk up now. Right. With the aid of the hand of the giants, we're going to get this one nice and close. And you can clearly see here now. The plastic slide bars and the cross head and that can pop out from the slide bars, okay? Very go very careful with that, is how you pick them up. And they, they to be honest with you, it, 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 I managed to put that back in with my big finger, big fat fingers, okay, when they, they've ever popped out. There's a, there, it's going to happen, I mean, it's just going to happen, no matter how careful you are, you're going to pick that up the wrong way, and they might pop out. The cab itself, is not a fully decorated cab, you can see there, it's a uh, black, okay, which is something, I mean, on a 23 year old locomotive, you can expect that. I added the crew. And if you've got a great western locomotive, please, please, please put the driver on the right hand side, the fireman on the left, okay? Seen a number of those which have been incorrectly fitted. Easy mistake to make, but it can spoil the model. And there's your four plates there. That, if you can get that focused on there, come on, focus, that's it. There's your four plates. And it goes between the tender and the locomotive, okay? And it's hinged, see it? You can also see that's how the, the, the tender and the, the, the drawbar fits into, into the tender, okay? You've got that kind of uh, this uh, affair here. And that clips into the tender. You need to, if you ever take these apart, you need to make sure that the metal bit's on the bottom, okay? And again, you can see the full plates. Clearly see it now. So we're going out of focus. There we go, okay? So those really are, are some of the main features of these locomotives. Also, what I would say about these uh, early Orby locomotives, they weigh a ton. Now on the earlier one, the 2001 version, this county of Monmouth, you do not get sprung buffers, but you get on the later 2006 model. Another nice thing about these is representation of the coal load. And this, this tender design carries on into the railroad model. In fact, the railroad model owes a lot to this original design from the early 2000s for Hornby. And you can see clearly see here the straight nameplate, County of Monmouth, number 1020. Okay, very, very nice locomotive. And you can see as well, Fully glazed cab with a gold surround, with a metal effect surround around the window there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be to have a look at the railroad model now.
because they do owe a lot of similarities to each other okay and we'll talk about advantages and disadvantages and I will get some people screaming at the screen I know I will but I can only go on my own personal experience okay now what we're going to do is we're going to put um we'll do a little bit of shunting now in just a moment and you'll see how I'm going to change these engines over because this um layout has got a certain amount of shunting potential either for locomotives or goods in fact I could put an engine shed on this layout and I can move trains in and out of the engine shed well let's uh, put the locomotive back I don't know how you can see this but uh, here's the rating ramp Now we're back on track again. Right, so you might be wondering now, how am I going to achieve an engine change? Okay, when I've got uh, Counter Monmouth here and Counter Cornwall's up in the far corner. Right, well, first of all, We'll uncouple. So we've now got our rolling stock here. Okay, so we've uncoupled. With this uncoupling ramp thing here. And then we'll concentrate on the junction over here now. Okay, so now we are going to uh, bring County of Cornwall into play, which is the Hornby Railroad model. Hopefully we'll be able to get a decent uh, engine change over it. Here it comes. Now these models, the railroad models, very much similar except one major change okay and i'll go into that in just a moment let's take it around the track now let have a little run and we'll talk about the main differences now this one is in great western green now what i would say about the, any of these models here i found this particular model very very difficult to get hold of and uh, when I saw one come up on the Intel uh, available I jumped at the chance okay <coughs> very 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 nice models now there's a difference in chassis design In that, I'll bring this up a little bit so you can see. You've got the five pole motor on these now. There we are, you can see that's where it is. And I've got the place where the DCC chip goes there as well. Okay. I think one of my other models there is DCC ready, I'm not sure where the chip goes. Um, the way that the tender and the um, locomotive are coupled together is exactly the same. But here's your difference, okay? 
Now these are very very nice motors, very quiet runners, I mean different chassis design to accommodate the uh, the skewan motor. This locomotive is fitted with a sealed long life five pole motor which requires no maintenance. After a considerable amount of use, now I don't keep specify that okay. The motor may require replacement and it should be carried out by a Hornby service dealer. So, love this yard. I mean, all, all the modern locomotives you get today <laughs> don't have replaceable brush and springs. They've got a motor. They're, they're very, very long life motors and in general are very reliable. Um, I've only had one motor go pop and that was on at Oxford Well Dean Goods. And that motor went pop and it never went, never went again. I, could, I, I couldn't get a motor for it. And um, that's the one thing. I mean, this model might go on for another 20 years. I don't know. You need to bear in mind that these earlier models here, County of Brecon, and County of Monmouth up there, both had motors which were in the locomotive, they've just sustained, but they had replacement. Now there might be a slight lack of continuity here because we've just hit the 30 minute recording. There's a recording limit on this camera, 30 minutes. And apparently it was all to do with the EU and tax, okay? If these were sold as video proper video cameras, um, it's a mirrorless Canon 50, which cost me 500 odd quid, I think, if I remember rightly. That was just body only. And because of the EU, these were these were selling over right now. These were saddled with a 30 minute recording limit. Otherwise, they would have popped an extra tax on them because they were going to be called video recorders instead. And so what happens is, of course, you're blissfully unaware a lot of the time, filming away. I've done this loads of times. I not realise that the uh, not watching the time, not realise you stop recording. I suddenly you've ruined your video, okay? <coughs> I spotted that just in time and I managed to um save the day by restarting the camera just in time. But uh, apparently this this really stopped now, so if you buy a, a camera nowadays it should have no recording limit on there, but that's why you get the recording limits. Now another one that we, uh, I also record in what they call 1080p, okay, 1080p which is full HD, this camera's got 4K, I've never used it, okay, I would, I would in certain circumstances maybe, but what you get with it on 4K is a huge crop, okay, and also the file sizes are enormous. And in fact, a fair number of um, people, YouTubers, have actually stuck with 1080p or returned back to 1080p. So they've gone over to 4K and they said it's a bee's knees. But you need to bear in mind that you need a huge amount of storage if you want to keep them on your hard drive. And well, that's, that's about the camera. We'll get back to the loco now. It's a railroad county class. <coughs> you can either get them DCC ready or DCC fit. In mine is DCC ready. And it's in Great Western livery. Now, County of Cornwall, obviously, being something that obviously I, I love, I love the Welsh counties. I'm part Welsh myself, okay, so I've got a great affection for County of Monmouth and County of Brecon or Brecknock. But I'm also um, live in Bristol, so I've got quite a large affection for Cornwall, and so I wanted to get County of Cornwall. Just had to have it, and eventually I managed to find one. And you always take a chance on eBay. Luckily, these all three models turned out to be good purchases. They were as described, okay? Some of my more recent purchases, <coughs> I would say possibly, I would use a little bit more caution when, when buying from eBay now. I've had, I've had, in 99, 95%, I'd say my model has been perfectly good. This one's been brilliant, uh, needed to do nothing to it. I mean, if you're going to buy an older an older model, they may be kept in the box a long time. Yes, you'll need to give them a bit of a service. 
Well, I would say is none of these locomotives have had bits missing and things like that. Parts missing and uh, they're very, very good actually. Okay, so what you've done then, you've seen the earlier locomotive by Hornby, made in the 2000s, and the more modern railroad, which has got the 5 pole motor in it now. Now, let's show you the uh, big differences between the two, okay? Well, actually, no, not a big difference. It might be a big difference, uh, depending on uh, what your eye for detail is, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this one in, and I'll just show you what I mean. You might think it's not a problem. A lot of people would say it isn't. <coughs> Pardon me. But something I notice. And bear in mind that the Hornby Railroad model is designed to be a more affordable range and more durable range. Now what they've done of course is they've carried on the body design and everything else is very very similar to these locomotives. But they did make one small economy. Now you probably just saw there, beautiful, into there. Beautiful runners, these. If we get a chance of County of Cornwall, just go for it, I'd say. Okay, I might not be able to see this from here actually. I will zoom in a bit. Yep. Okay, on here, you get the metallic surround. That's on County of Brecknock and County of Monmouth. But on the railroad model, You don't guess it. Unless someone told you, you probably wouldn't even know. But that's what you need to bear in mind, okay? That, that's something you don't get on this. <coughs> Not really a problem for me, to be honest with you. You can also see a difference here. You've got the... Um, I'll focus on this engine now, hopefully. Great Western. It's in Great Western livery. The tenders are virtually the identical designs, apart from the livery on it. And the locomotive bodies, I think the bodies are not uh, exactly interchangeable, but uh, I think I, if it, but Barry Davis did a conversion of one of these because he, he's, he's a big fan of the uh, the five pole motor and everything else that goes into the railroad county. But he fits in one of these bodies from one of these older models onto one of the newer ones, and he had to make some alterations. So. Barry Davis, the person to look at on there, he did a video on those. But really for me, uh, which one is best? Like I said, with all things in life, there's advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, you've got a much more modern design with the uh, Hornby Railroad, with the five pole motor and the beautiful runners, okay. But with the older model, which you can see now, there's something about my tripod wobbling. You do get the interchangeable brushes and springs, okay? So this might be uh, important to some people, people more than others, maybe. Okay? So what we're going to do then, is we're going to bring our lovely Kanshi Kumba back out. We'll see what she's like running. Now, sorry if they've um, leapt away from a standing start a little bit, the locomotives tonight. That's me being a bit clumsy on the controller. They all, the, all the locomotives will pull away very, very nicely from a standing start. <coughs> Let's have a change of points. And this is basically the last large express locomotive designed for the Great Western Railway before nationalisation. Of course, for under under British Railways, there was uh, the standard class of locomotives that, which came out, and later the diesels. And on a different subject, the very very last sort of independent design. From the western region of British Rail, or Great Western or Western region, for large for large passenger locomotives, 
were the warships and the westerns and the, the smaller uh, baby warships. Those were the last ever designs to come from Swindon Works. And in fact, once they were withdrawn, it wasn't long before Swindon Works itself was unfortunately closed down. You can still see part of Swindon Works as a, as a museum, but it's a great shame that the um, <coughs> what's mighty great one, great western Swindon Works was clo was actually closed down. The place where uh, Brunel and Gooch decided would be the home of the Great Western Railway. Now, if you liked watching this video, please give me a like. And if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Doesn't cost anything to subscribe, it just you just made uh, aware of the new videos. And for those of you uh, and for all those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing and, and thank you for taking an interest in my channel. I do appreciate it. <coughs> I've got about 330 subscribers now. I didn't think in my modest streams I'd even get 30. And that's the truth. I didn't know. I, 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 I did this during the lockdown, this, uh, this channel. And it's been a great comfort to me and a, a, great, a great deal of enjoyment. And it did help me get through the uh, lo 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 losing father. I, I mean, I, I, I think really uh, that this is a wonderful hobby, okay? And what I would say is, now, thank you very, very, very much uh, for watching my video. And I should bid you farewell and good night.